time on the bottom of the screen. Uh, stocks uh, above 11,000, oil hitting an 18-month high, a gallon of gas continues to cost more at the pump. All of these are signs that an economy is picking up steam. Well, our guests are going to break down the numbers and ask, answer your questions of, about the economy when we come back. Stay with us. When you... There are basically three things that are going to make you feel better about yourself financially. One is the value of your property going up if you own property. The second one is the value of your investments going up if you have investments, and many of you do through your 401k or your IRA. And of course, the third and most important is the value of your wage going up. And really, you need unemployment to be low. You need uh, there to be fewer jobs uh, or fewer people for more jobs in order for that to happen. But there are a lot of indicators out there that things are starting to get better with the economy, including the stock market. Take a look at that. Close to 11,000. When we were at the peak in October of 2007, it was above 14,000. Uh, it went down into the sixes. Let's talk about whether these are all signs that the economy is coming back and what you should do about it. I want to uh, join, I want to talk to you, I want to talk with Sean Baldwin. He's the chairman of Capital Management Group uh, joining us from Chicago. Stephen Lieb is the chairman of Lieb Capital Management. Both of these guys very involved with money. Stephen has written uh, several books on oil as well, and that's the interesting story right now, Stephen. Uh, oil trading above $85 a barrel uh, when it was in the, the 30s uh, during the recession that we've just come through. Yeah, it is uh, an amazing story, Ali, and it's not just oil. It's also copper, it's also aluminum, it's also the entire commodity complex. And I think this is a real strong message to America that uh, we're not the ones that are driving commodity prices anymore. In fact, if you look, you mentioned October 07. Oil, copper, and aluminum are exactly where they were in October 07. In other words, they've lost no ground despite the fact the Dow is down maybe 20 percent. We've lost 7 million jobs, I think, or 6 million jobs in this economy. Oil had basically has gone up fourfold despite the fact that Americans are consuming today exactly what they were back in year 2000. It's a new world, and it's a frightening world if we don't address it. This world is being driven by massive, and I mean massive, demand for commodities from the developing world, and in particular, China. All right, Sean, uh, taking that into account, uh, our economy here in the United States may be recovering more slowly than people would like. They'd like house prices to go up perhaps uh, faster so they can sell a house or they can, they can do something of that. We'd like uh, certain things. We'd like unemployment to be lower. But what Stephen is talking about is a world that still has increasing demand for all sorts of things how does how do our viewers capitalize on this uh, two ways one even though the oil is increasing he, he said something very key here China is a tremendous has a tremendous demand for oil China also holds a tremendous amount of US debt that is going to they're going to continue to exacerbate that problem if we're looking at the, the Dow in terms of the growth the growth is going to continue forward Essentially, what's been driving the Dow is that money managers have been piled in and a number of mechanisms that guys used to short the market before have been removed. The shorting law, the shorting laws have been repealed for the uptick <clears throat> in terms of CDSs. That's been stopped and there's been extensive regulation of hedge funds. This is going to continue to drive the Dow. Normally, when you look at the oil, oil and bond yields being up and the S&P uh, continuing to go up usually are contradictory. That's not the case in this particular instance because there's... A, 7.6 trillion dollars of institutional money which will continue to drive the Dow up. All right, Stephen, do you agree that the Dow continues to go up along with oil? I think that for a while that's certainly true, Ali, but we're, we're going to reach a point where, you know, you have to remember oil, copper, aluminum, all these commodities are going up and this is just a tax on the U.S. economy. It's not, these, are, these commodities are not going up because all of a sudden our economy is super strong. I agree with Sean. It is getting a little bit better, but certainly nothing to the extent that would justify these rapid increases in commodities and therefore we're facing a, we're going to continue to face greater and greater headwinds in the form of commodities. Again, I know I'm repeating myself. I've said this before, but but we so desperately need a, a, a massive, massive program to create green jobs. I mean, China is getting so far ahead of us in this area that it really, I mean, well, you, I, me I know that you, night. Stephen, think that that's a very interesting area of investment. Sean, do you agree? Uh, or let me just ask it to you this way. For my viewers out there, clearly uh, you don't think they should just throw all their money broadly into the stock market. What should they be looking at their 401ks or IRAs no. for uh, investment purposes right now? 
Well, first of all, he made a good point. You know, there was $70 billion of new money, institutional money, that went into commodities. And UBS just released a report where they said there'll be another $70 billion. It's going to expand. It's rapidly becoming a wider, uh, a wider asset class. Guys should look for indexes where they can invest in co to commodities. Second, though, in terms of this rally, if we want to look at it on a medium-term basis, you, at Dow, there's no technical resistance for Dow 11,000. As you said before, the Dow's gotten as high as 14,000. Broadly based, you're going to find two other things that drive this market. One is going to be that they're, the corporations now are very lean. They're lean. They've got lots of money. They're going to make very focused acquisitions for things to accelerate their market share. The second part is going to be is that the IPO catalog is so backlogged. So what's going to happen is these corporations with non-core businesses, they're going to send them off in IPOs and they're going to issue secondaries. The institutional money managers who are involved in buying stocks now in the market are going to continue that buying trend they're going to, because they're basically augmenting their bets. They're going to have the second half to then go into these other issues, which is going to basically translate into small and mid-cap growth. That growth is going to continue to keep the market throughout the end of the year high. I personally think that oil can get as high. I wrote my column last October that oil might get as high as 95. Wow. Some people might disagree with that. But the thing is, is that you cannot look from a U.S. focus. The yeah. growth is international. The demand from China in the emerging markets is yeah. far greater than we've anticipated. Well, you're, you're both and agreed we'll on that. To push it. You're agreed on that point. Sean Baldwin, uh, Chairman of Capital Management Group, and Stephen Lieb of Lieb Capital Management. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll talk to you again soon. Uh, you